Good morning. Uh, we're going to be getting started. How you all doing today? Everybody awake? Everybody got their coffee? I know uh, I got a two-month-old at home, so I'm kind of awake. Um, but no, my name is Jalil Smith. I'm from Stanton, Virginia. Um, I'm 29 years old. Uh, I'm a husband of four years. I'm a father of three boys, an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 9-year-old stepson. Can I take this off? And like I said, I have a two-month-old at home. So um, just turned 29 in August. Um, I've been at Target Distribution Center for a little bit now. Um, I work weekends. And I'm a felon. I spent five years in prison between 18 years old and 24 years old. And um, I think more than my accomplishments and more than my achievements, that's what's seen the most um, when looked at me on paper. Um, I did my time in prison. I got out of prison. I got full custody of both of my boys. So they live at home with me full time. Um, so I have a lot to brag about, but um, probably around a year and a half ago, um, our house was actually sold from underneath of us. And um, man, we spent a while trying to find housing um, just on the whim, and it was, you know, you need three times the rent, and you need 640 and better in credit score, and like I said, at that time, I was like 27, 28. I didn't, I didn't have that, so we ended up um, living in a hotel, my wife and I, and the three boys, and um, mainly because of my felony, right? So I served my time, I paid my debt to society, and then um, I'm still kind of like blackballed because of, you know, a decision I made at 18. Um, and more importantly, less than about myself, more about my kids, right, and my wife and uh, my nine-year-old stepson who my wife and my nine-year-old stepson was affected by it because we're married and we're tied in together. So now they have to ride this wave of misfortunes with me. And then my own two kids, right, they had to suffer uh, along with me because – of a choice I made when I was 18, but also because um, of that choice and of that felony, it made it hard for us to find uh, a place to live. Um, fast forward a year and a half later, we've been in our apartment for a year now, so things are going good. Like I said, just had a baby, so things are going great. My first daughter. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm not gonna stand up here and ramble because you'll hear from me again later. Um, on the panel, but um, we are going to get into um, VPM actually came and did an interview uh, with some of us, and we're going to roll my segment of the interview now. More than just words. So it's like you're coming down the Ave, and once you get to that stoplight, once you pass Bessie Weller, you take a left and go up that hill. Almost froze out there. Uh, do you hear me? No, yeah. Check, 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 one, two, check, one, two. Maybe if I turn them up. Uh, turn up the uh, the volume. I, I can hear you now. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Yeah. I've always loved music. I played the saxophone in band. I was terrible. <laughs> song I'm writing now for my album, I said, um, I don't want war. I just want peace. I'm a felon. I just want my name on the lease. I don't want war, just want peace. I want my name to go on that lease. It ain't no secret. I'm a felon. I'm no longer in the streets. I don't really want to focus on the negative so much. But I do kind of want to give people who hasn't been through it um, that perspective. That's it. Like most of our lives, we spent in a house, in a home. So it's like until that's ripped away, you don't really know how it feels to not have it. Living out the whole joke. Used to be a Superman, but I done lost my mojo. Three kids to feed, my wife and me, there's no joke. Mama told me this too shall pass, baby, hold on. scary, not knowing what's about to happen with three kids. It got so real that we talked about divorce. Both of us. She came to me and I kind of agreed. Of course, I'm like, no, no, no. But like, you know, selflessly, I'm like, you have a child too. Mind you, we don't share any kids together. I have two and you have one. And we're getting told no because of me. And that's leaving you and your son in the cold when you could easily go somewhere and get an apartment or whatever with you and your son and be good. So like, 
it definitely shook our foundation a lot. Just trying to find housing, we almost had to separate as a family. It was bad. I knew that this felony was going to make things harder for me, but I thought that if I rearranged my life and I reconstructed the the fabric of who I am, um, the things would be a little easier for me. No run-ins with the law, no probation violation, and so it kind of makes you feel like, where's redemption? Three, four, five, six, six seven, eight, nine. Wait, no, you were supposed to go home. You couldn't put home, Dad. Oh. Dad. Wait. <laughs> Wait. All right, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just stop here at our safety zone. I can't erase any blemishes, but uh, I use them as a as a building block. I'm that building block for my children. What'd you get? Four. One, Slide. Two, three, four. Uh, move forward 11 or change places with an opponent. Yeah, not mine, not mine. Just move. It starts at home, it starts in the home front. But if I don't have a home to teach them, then how can I lead them? We know that housing stability is actually an underlying indicator for future success for children. Yes, yeah, single family home ownerships allows you to build wealth. Stability, stability of housing is what creates opportunity. We were on a list for this last year. My wife, being the person she is, persistent. <laughs> I call her all the time, like all the time to the point where she kind of knew me before she even met me because she's like, girl, you call me so much. We were so ecstatic the day that they called us. They were like, no, depending on the condition. And I'm like, I don't care about the condition. I'll clean it. I'll clean everything by myself, 100%. I don't need nobody. Just tell me that we can move in. There's nothing more fulfilling in working with affordable housing than seeing the realization that I'm going to be a homeowner. People don't believe that it's real. When is this going to be taken away from me? This doesn't happen for someone like me. Housing truly is transformational. This is my own very first place with my name on the lease, and it's mine. And then to add on to that, like, I'm married to somebody, and it's hers too. This is her name. We just found out that she's a girl last week. Found out we were having a girl. I couldn't even focus in the store. I'm like, we got to get out of here, bro. <laughs> this is me and my grandfather, us, our kids. It's my best friend's daughter, my niece. So it's not just us on this wall, it's everybody that we care about, everybody that we love. We come from trying to build this family and everybody else's household. And so it means a lot to be here now because it's ours. You know, I, I can do whatever I want. I can do backflips six times a day in here if I wanted to. Like, it's, it's, it's mine. I think it makes a difference when you have your own space to recharge in. Everything's how you want it to be. And then I also take pride in, like, paying and like providing for myself. So it's almost like a sense of peace and happiness. It still bothers me, you know, because there's a lot of, I'm not the only guy in Stanton, Virginia, or Waynesburg, or Harrisonburg, Virginia, who this has happened to, or who's me and changed and moved on and became better. That's why it still bothers me, because it's like, it might be somebody else like me that's still going through it. A lot of us don't know anything that we probably should know. The loops, the holes. I didn't know anything about housing to begin with. I didn't know how to fill out an application for an apartment or a house. I, I went into prison not knowing this. And um, so I didn't know what to expect. I just expected freedom. <laughs> I was just ready to be home. We're still playing catch up on all the stuff that we yeah. that we took a hit on. Being homeless is what really messed us up. Like that put us back on our car payment because we did not have it. <laughs> um, it just almost feels like a never ending cycle of you have to like catch up or you gotta like make more money just to like have a place to stay. I almost felt like I was fighting every day just to live. Not just to even try to go out and make the next step happen. A little, a little pessimistic is a common thing for me right now. We actually uh, made that into the timeout chair. <laughs> if I had my own apartment, that would fix a lot of my problems, I think. Um, Mentally, definitely mentally. <laughs> um, yeah, just thinking about it makes me, it makes me hope <laughs> for sure. 
housing is a human right, so we need to prioritize housing for all. The human story should highlight why this conversation about affordable housing is a moral and ethical imperative for us as individuals and elected officials and developers to tackle. We always talk about more than houses. It's about opportunity, hope, dignity, change. It's the faith that you have to have. It's the wanting of knowing that you deserve better. And don't ever be afraid to ask for help either. I think everybody had help at one time or another. Even if it seems like there's no hope sometimes, like there is, even if it's a little bit. <laughs> and then you look back and think about that house you wanted, and you got it.